back to the president where he took to Twitter this morning to insist that his administration has never given a penny to North Korea. Earlier today, the leaders from North Korea's neighboring countries, China and Russia, met. Joining me now from the Heritage Foundation to discuss it all is Olivia, Olivia Enos. Olivia, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so back to what the president was talking about uh, earlier this morning. That, of course, deals with the story of Otto Warmbier. We learned yesterday that Warmbier, who was returned comatose to the U.S. in 2017 after being held in North Korea for 15 months, when that happened, the North Koreans had a demand, give us $2 million. The U.S. signed off on the demand, but the money never actually went to North Korea. Here was the tweet from President Trump earlier this morning. He said the following, quote, No money was paid to North Korea for Otto Warmbier, not $2 million, not anything else. Your takeaway. Well, no money should be going to North Korea or any type of rogue actor that would take an American hostage because we don't want to be encouraging bad actors to be taking Americans only to extract benefits or monetary value from the United States. So I think it was a good move uh, if, in fact, the president never uh, issued a $2 million payment for Otto Warmbier. But I think that the entire Otto Warmbier situation is a reminder to the U.S. and to the world that we're dealing with an incredibly brutal dictator here. Here. Kim Jong-un is not a nice guy. This is a guy who imprisons Americans. This is a guy who imprisons between 80,000 to 120,000 of his own citizens in political prison camps. We need to start addressing these human rights issues and soon. That reminder, does that, does that put into perspective what we're dealing with here as it relates to potential denuclearization, which is a much uh, much broader uh, and major topic as well. Yeah, I mean, I think human rights have been entirely absent from the conversations that we've been having, whether in Singapore or in Hanoi during our diplomacy with North Korea. And I think it's nearly impossible to move the needle on denuclearization with North Korea if we don't deal with the human rights abuses that in many ways enable the Kim regime to continue that weapons development. Real quickly here, sticking in that region today, uh, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, shaking hands uh, in China, talking about China's Belt and Road Initiative. Xi Jinping tried to use this moment to say and talk about the initiative and say, hey, uh, we're transparent here in all of this. This, of course, the Chinese initiative to try to uh, build out infrastructure in the rest of the world. And here's what Xi Jinping said. He said, quote, everything should be done in a transparent way and we should have zero tolerance for corruption. Mm. Believe him? <laughs> Definitely not. I mean, I think what we've seen is that both Russia and China love to work together. And it's ironic that Russia is coming and meeting with China just a day after meeting with rogue leader Kim Jong un. Just yesterday. Exactly. And both China and Russia are oftentimes working together, colluding to help North Korea to evade sanctions, for example. And of course, we're going to see them continuing to work together on the Belt and Road Initiative because they have interests and they want to export forms of authoritarianism that really pose a direct threat to the US. Olivia Enos of the uh, Heritage Foundation, thanks for stopping in on a busy news night. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having, having me. Weekend.